Hello, Storytime friends. It's Miss Anne back with another book read aloud for you today. This one's interesting. We haven't done one like this before. So this is a picture book that's based on a folk tale. And if you haven't heard that word before, that's a word that means that the story wasn't written by a specific person. It was a story that used to be told orally. So it used to be told without a book and without pictures. It used to be just told to from one person to another person. And folk tales often get really beautiful picture book retellings like this one that we're gonna look at today. So this one was retold by a woman called Heather Forrest and it was illustrated, the paintings were done, and they are paintings, the illustrations are paintings, were done by a woman named Susan Gaber. So this book is called Stone Soup. Has anybody heard a Stone Soup version before? Oh, I have two. This version is new to me. But Stone Soup, it's original folktales from Europe. And the best part about folktales is that each version is slightly different. Everybody puts their own spin on it. And at the very end, in the comments for this video, I am going to put a little activity so you can tell the story your own way too. So we read this version first so we know exactly how it goes. Let's do it. There was once a comfortable little village nestled in the mountains. The people who lived there had more than enough to keep themselves content. One day, two travelers came along. Their coats were tattered, their hats were torn, their dusty shoes had holes in the soles. Hungry and tired, one traveler said to the other, Surely someone here can spare a bit of food. What do you think? Are the people in the village going to share with them? They knocked boldly on a door. It creaked open and a woman asked, what do you want? Please, said one of the travelers, we are hungry. Do you care? Will you share? Do you have any food? The woman squinted her eyes and tartly replied, no. She quickly slammed the door shut. The travelers walked a little farther down the road and knocked on another door. A young boy answered. Oh, his chocolate brown eyes were sweet. He looks like someone who might share. Good day, he said shyly. What do you want? Please, said one of the travelers, we are hungry. Do you care? Will you share? Do you have any food? The boy replied, there is no food here, and closed the door. Do you think that's true, that they don't have anything to share? Or do you think maybe they just aren't very good at sharing? The travelers wandered wearily through the village, knocking on every door. But everywhere they heard, I don't care, I won't share, there is no food. They sat to rest beside a well. One traveler sighed and clutched his empty belly. He said, if there is really no food in this elegant little village, then the people who live here are in greater need than we are. We should make them our magical soup. A magical soup? I wonder what could be inside. The two travelers climbed up on the edge of the well and they shouted, We are master cooks. If anyone in this town has a big black pot, we will make the most delicious soup anyone ever tasted. Oh, the most delicious ever? That must be a really good soup. A door slowly opened and a round man emerged carrying a gigantic black pot. I love to eat, he said. Here's a pot. Let me see what two master cooks can do with it. Watch and see, said one of the travelers with glee. The travelers filled the pot with cold water and built a fire. Soon the flames licked the sides of the pot and billows of steam rose into the air. Curious people began to gather. What is happening, the townspeople asked. We are making an unusual soup, said one of the travelers. It requires a very special magical ingredient. I am certain we will find it in this town. All the eyes in the crowd watched as one of the travelers reached down and picked up an ordinary stone. He tossed it into the pot with a splash. We're making stone soup, he said. It will be nutritious, delicious, incredible, and edible. But it would taste better, he paused and sighed, if we only had a 
carrot. But where would we find a carrot in this town? The other traveler asked. We knocked on every door and everywhere we heard, I don't care, I won't share, there is no food. Then perhaps we cannot make this delicious soup after all. They both announced with a sad shrug of their shoulders and began to turn away until a child timidly raised her hand and said, wait, I might have a small carrot. Excellent, shouted the travelers. Bring what you've got, put it in the pot. We're making stone soup. This magical soup would taste even better if we had a potato, they said. A deep voice in the back of the crowd called out, I have a potato. Wonderful, shouted the travelers. Bring what you've got, put it in the pot. We're making stone soup. It would taste better still, they said, if we had just a few more ingredients. What do you think? What would you like to add to the soup? Oh, that's such a good idea. I like that in my soup too. Let's find out what the villagers were able to share. Perhaps, said one villager, I could bring a green bean. Well, said another, if you're going to bring a green bean, I will bring a kernel of corn. I shall not be outdone, cried another. I will bring an egg noodle. One by one, voices announced, I will bring a slice of celery. I will bring a pinch of pepper. I can bring a sprig of parsley. I might have a tiny turnip. Well, why are you waiting, cried the travelers. Bring what you've got, put it in the pot. We're making stone soup. Everyone in the town ran home to bring one small thing to put in the pot. Food flew through the air and landed with splashes in the growing soup. Soon the huge pot was full and simmering and a wonderful smell drifted through the air. Look at all those things that they added. Can you find the names of those vegetables? Let's see. I see a carrot. I see a mushroom. I see broccoli. I see celery. I see leeks. I see eggplant. I see some radishes. There's a lot of different fun vegetable words that we can use when we're talking about stone soup, right? The smell was so tempting that people brought out bowls and spoons and chairs and tables. They placed hearty loaves of bread and chunks of cheese and bowls of fruit on the tablecloths. Everyone came to taste the soup and marveled at the flavor. It's amazing, said one woman. These two travelers made such a delicious soup out of a stone. Out of a stone, said the travelers with a grin. And a magical ingredient, sharing. Yeah, that was the magic that made the soup come together. As the travelers left the town, they said, if anyone ever wants to make this soup again, just remember the recipe. The recipe is pretty simple. Bring what you've got, put it in the pot. Every bit counts. From the largest to the least, together we can celebrate a stone soup feast. And even the puppy and the kitten and the bird got to taste some of the stone soup. Everybody got to benefit from being kind to one another and sharing. All right, storytime friends, thank you so much for joining me for this lovely story today. I know that with everything going on right now, we all need a little bit of kindness and sharing in our lives. We all need to remember to be helpers. And I mentioned at the very beginning of the read aloud that I was going to include an activity. So right there is a picture of what it looks like. I made some little cards with different foods that you might want to put in a stone soup. And I made a little pot that you can color or decorate however you want. So if you want to print those out, or you can make your own, it's real simple. You can just draw your own pictures of the kinds of things you'd like to put in your stone soup. And retell the story all on your own with your own little twist on it, right? You don't have to tell it the exact same way as the one that we read. Retelling a story in your own words, especially when you use props like that, can really help with improving reading comprehension, meaning what you understand about what we read together and your sequencing skills. So first something happens and then something happens and then finally another thing happens, right? Everything's in order. And you can ask some open-ended questions, grown-ups, of your kiddos to get them to fill in some of the details like, 
what would your soup smell like? What would you put in your soup if you were in charge, right? It's a great way to extend the story. And if you want to read the story itself, again, you can. You can watch the video, of course. And I'll put the link to the ebook version on Hoopla, on our app Hoopla, in the comments as well. So if you want to check out this very version, you can. All right, until next time, story time friends. I love you. I miss you. Mwah.